Thanks for checking out the CPU Core page on Steam. The purpose of the CPU Core software is to give whatever game you're playing the most amount of processing power it can have, which hopefully is going to increase your FPS in that particular game. The way it works is when you first run the software, it automatically identifies and configures itself for all the different Steam games you have. Uh, for example, you, we can scroll through here and we can see all the different Steam games that I have. It looks like 110 Steam games. Now, there's other views within the CPU Core software. You can click on the grid view and you can see all the different uh, games that you have and you can kind of expand it and collapse it and get kind of a more broad view for all the different things that you have installed. You can also search. So for example, we're going to type uh, Arma 3 and you can see Arma right there. We're going to delete this. And it also works with non-Steam games. So if you click the plus symbol, you can click select and you can put in whatever type of game you want. So for example, we could do D and do WoW and we could do World of Warcraft. And then you just click Start, and CPU cores will do everything that it needs to do specifically for World of Warcraft. We're going to pick, uh, just as a demonstration, let's do mspaint.exe. Now, I have video recording software running on my computer right now. I have uh, a couple documents. I have a couple I have web, web browsers. I have Firefox. I have Chrome open. Um, and I have uh, my video recording and editing software open. So everything going on right now on my computer is using about, looks like 26 to 30, maybe 35% CPU power. Now when I click Start Games, what's going to happen is CPU Cores is going to start by looking at all the different processes that the operating system has, and it's going to look at the non-game related processes as well. It's going to constrain them to the first core that I have on my computer, and it's going to then prepare the second core for whatever type of game that I want to run. Here we're going to use MS Payton as an example, but um, you can kind of get the picture. Um, I have CPU core set to disable hyperthreading. I have it set to put whatever the software is only on a dedicated core. For this we're going to use MS Paint, so it doesn't really matter. And we're going to en always enable the uh, OS I isolation. So when we hit the start games, you're going to notice that the processing power in this core is going to increase and this one is going to decrease dramatically. It'll probably have a little bit left mostly because of the video recording software that I'm running. So let's click start games. Here's a little MS Paint. You notice that there's a spike here in the core and we're going to kind of call this the operating system core. This is going to have your non-game stuff. And you can see that this core here, which has all these other things that are running, is starting to clean up and prepare itself uh, to be used just for a game. Now again, I have a video recording software and I've set that to use a little bit of processing power in this core as well as a lot more in this core. But this will kind of give you the picture of uh, what CPU core does if it was an actual game that you're playing. If you had a quad core CPU, it would be this core would be for your operating system and your web browsers and so on, and all the other cores would be used just for gaming. So if we close MS Paint here, we can see everything will kind of return back to normal. You can see that the CPU on this one starts to increase a little bit, and then the CPU uh, for this one starts to decrease a little bit. So essentially, CPU core will control your operating system, control your non-games, your antivirus, your web browsers. Um, let's say your Windows is doing an index, or your antivirus is doing a scan, whatever that is, it's going to constrain it all so it can't use more than what your CPU zero has available. Um, in addition, it's going to isolate a core or a series of cores just for your game. And then it has a couple other options that you see here. So the net result is more CPU for whatever game it is that you're playing, and that should give you more FPS. Now, you're probably wondering how much more FPS will that give you. I've done a couple benchmark videos here, and I'm going about to show them for you. I've posted this on the actual Steam discussion forum. So on the CPU core Steam discussion forums, there should be a sticky at the top that shows a few benchmark videos. I've done Arma 3, which is probably the number one most uh, in-demand benchmark that I do. And CPU cores had about a 17.5% FPS increase. You can actually click on this video and you can see the demonstration of how um, I do uh, an Arma 3 benchmark before CPU cores and then an Arma 3 benchmark um, after CPU cores. So about a 17.5% increase. Um, Arma 3, as everybody knows, is a very, very intensive game. I was very surprised that we got 17.5%. Very happy. Then we did Team Fortress 2, which is an old school game. 58% um, FPS increase. Now, I ran this test multiple times. I was seeing as high as 70% FPS increase. Completely, completely surprising me that it was such a high uh, increase. So here we can, uh, you can click on that video in the uh, sticky. See that? Uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider is a extremely graphical game. It's an extremely uh, intense game. And um, 
Whereas uh, Team Fortress 2 is a little bit more CPU heavy and a little bit less GPU heavy. Uh, Tomb Raider is a little bit more GPU heavy. So for games that are m more CPU bound, you'll, you should be able to get more FPS. If a game is a little bit less CPU bound, more GPU reliant, then you won't get as much of an FPS increase. So 6.3% on Tomb Raider right here. And I have one more here. Uh, I tested Left 4 Dead 2 and I saw about a 14%. It actually went 14% as high as right around 18% of an FPS increase. Now, um, I have a little bit of information about my specs up here. Um, I tested on the same uh, system that I am doing this video recorder with, which is a dual core uh, Intel G3258 with a GTX 960 processor. Um, but again, it's really the same for any type of game that you're playing. So whether you're doing um, a game that's very CPU intensive or a game that's very GPU intensive or a mix of the two, you should get uh, varying amounts of FPS increase. The goal for this software is to give you at least a few percentage points for the games that don't really have that much of a, a benefit, games that are really heavy GPU wise, upwards of you know as much as you can possibly get for an increase for games that are really heavy in the GPU um, or very heavy in the CPU usage. So as you can see, Team Fortress 2, a 58% uh, increase. Now, uh, CPU cores supports games that are single threaded as well as games that are multi-threaded. So games that are single threaded, it, you usually want to give it that one core that has as much availability specifically for that game as possible. And that's what CPU, CPU cores does. If your game is multi-threaded, let's say your game can use two threads. So it can use two different CPUs. For a game like that, you generally want to disable hyperthreading. Hyperthreading essentially is one real CPU and one uh, virtual CPU. And if a game can only support two CPUs, you want to give it two real CPUs instead of a virtual CPU. So when you disable hyperthreading, CPU cores will, uh, let's say you're doing ARC, for example. If you disable hyperthreading, CPU cores will prepare multiple uh, cores just for use for that game and then it'll assign the game just to those cores and then in addition CPU cores will um, isolate all your operating system and your Firefox and your Chrome or whatever to a core specific just for it. Now um, you can enable your game to only work with a dedicated core just for that specific game, or you can allow it to use the cores that you've prepared and also then leak on over into the operating system core should it have a little bit more CPU to spare. So hopefully this will describe what CPU core uh, CPU cores will do. And um, a couple things to note again are the CPU cores really benefits the most on processors that are two core and four core processors. And the most benefit you'll see are from games that are more CPU heavy um, most games have a, a pretty significant CPU uh, requirement, but the games that you see the highest increase are the games that have maybe a little bit more of the CPU uh, heavy games. But as you can see here, again, Arma 3, 17.5%, uh, Team Fortress 2, 58%, Tomb Raider, 6.3%, and Left 4 Dead to 14 percent and as time goes on with the software I'll be doing more and more benchmarks and posting more and more information on the uh, game benchmark CPU core thread and another thing to note too is uh, this software is always being updated um, we've updated it I believe five times in the past couple weeks since it's been released and there's been a lot of community feedback that has been really, really positive. And as people in the community have more ideas or more kind of tips and tricks or, or give more feedback, um, definitely I'm going to be incorporating that into the CPU core software. And uh, it's very excited to work on this project. And um, I'm really excited for the software overall. And anyway, thanks for watching this video. And if you have any questions about the CPU core software, please post them in the forums. Um, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Happy gaming.